Hi there, I'm Colin Green. You're listening to Spike Pit. But this is not one of my normal episodes. I'm calling these episodes my drive-by episodes, wherein I speak a little bit more candidly about the things that are on my mind. I'll be pulling less punches, maybe biting a bit less on my tongue. Now, if you think that's perhaps not such a good thing, then this is not the episode for you. Remember... This is a drive-by. Okay, folks, it's Saturday morning. I haven't got long. i just got time for a quickie, and I want to talk about oil. Well, let me rephrase that. I want to talk about lamp oil, more specifically, and it's... What I think is probably a little bit of overuse in your RPG games. I picked up this blog article a few days back and I thought what I'd like to do is just do a reading straight from it. I I found it really interesting and it kind of answers all the questions that I had in my mind about this subject. So I'll be interested on hearing what people think about this. For now, let's get to the reading. Lamp oil doesn't burn. Pure fantasy. Blazing walls of lit oil. Bombs fashioned from bottles of oil with a lit wick. Tossing oil on an enemy and setting them on fire. None of this is even close to realistic. Lamp oil is made from vegetable oil or maybe fish oil. These oils have a flashpoint in the range of two to three hundred degrees. What does this mean to the non-engineer? Oil doesn't burn. Flashpoint is a property of liquids. It is the temperature at which vapours from a liquid will burn when in contact with an ignition source. When oil is underneath this temperature, it cannot be ignited. So, all of these oil bombs and puddles of oil suddenly turning into a raging conflagration are all wrong quick science experiment for people who do not believe me. Grab some vegetable oil from your pantry and pour it into a dish. Light a match and hold it above the oil. Does the oil burn? No, seriously, go and do this, then come back. If you don't believe me, I'll wait. Oil does burn. That is why lamps were fuelled by oil. However, the oil has to be heated first before it will ignite. How do we accomplish this? With a lit wick. The wick heats the nearby oil above the flash point, causing the oil to give off enough vapours to sustain a flame. That's why you start an oil lamp or candle, same principle, by lighting the wick for a few seconds with an external fire source before the flame will catch. On the other hand, modern petroleum products ignite easily. The flash point of gasoline is around minus 44 degrees. Kids, don't play with gasoline. If you just had a bottle of oil and poured it on the ground, you are never going to get it to ignite with a torch. If you stick a wick into a bottle of oil and light it, the wick will burn. But if you throw that bottle and it shatters, the oil will not ignite and the flame will be snuffed out. Remember, only a tiny portion of the oil, very close to the wick, is hot enough to burn. Okay, so that is a mild pet peeve off my chest. If you're bothered by basic physics, don't let your players and monsters toss around Molotov cocktails made from vegetable oil. I don't. You heard me reading Lamp Oil Doesn't Burn. It was written on Wednesday the 20th of April 2011 and the full text can be found on the antilido.blogspot.com. Thank you for listening to this Spike Pit Drive-By episode. If you've enjoyed the show, consider spreading the word via social media. Take care. Catch you later.
All right, Colin, thanks for your lamp oil episode, although I must admit to being in a state of some discombobulation today because when I listened to it, I thought, gosh, if the whole lamp oil stuff is a fantasy, what else might there be about D&D that was, uh, that was maybe made up or fantastical or didn't follow the laws of physics? So I did some research. Even dragons. I thought there were dragons. I've seen them on telly. Apparently there were no dragons. Apparently when you dig up those bones and they look like they're proof of dragons, it's actually dinosaurs and physics dictates that they wouldn't have breathed fire or flown being that size. Um, the bigger ones. Uh, magic, magic. I could have sworn there were wizards and magicians, but apparently there are not. When I've seen people on the telly doing it, like Paul Daniels, apparently that's just, um, that's just pretend as well. The earth isn't flat, I discover, and you can't travel to magical planes. So uh, thanks for spoiling my day and for completely spoiling fantasy games for me.